Welcome to your 2014 Ascent. My name is Phil Nickel. I will give you a brief orientation of your 2014 Pleasure Way Ascent. The 2014 Ascent on the 2014 Mercedes-Benz chassis features the 2.1 liter Mercedes-Benz twin turbo engine coupled with the seven speed Mercedes-Benz transmission. This is a Bluetech engine. You have DEF fluid that burns alongside your diesel so that you have a clean running engine. You do have to add the DEF fluid that burns alongside your diesel fuel. This DEF tank normally is filled at your oil change intervals and should last from oil change to oil change. Please refer to your Mercedes-Benz manual for proper add and proper usage of your DEF fluid. The 2014 has the auxiliary battery mounted underneath the hood. The engine starting battery is under the driver's feet, just in front of the driver's captain's chair in the cabin of the vehicle. This is a 95 amp hour multi-purpose battery, which powers the coach portion of your unit. If you are wondering how to boost your vehicle, you would boost from the positive boosting post located on the passenger side of the engine, push the protection cover in and hook on with your positive cable. For your negative cable, you will hook on to the brass post that is just above the auxiliary battery. The Mercedes-Benz chassis has a locking hood prop located on the passenger side. Lift until you hear it lock into position. To disengage the hood prop, lift up on the hood, push the hood prop towards the passenger compartment, and lower the hood. Starting on the driver's side of the vehicle, you will find a locking fuel fill. This is locked when the driver's door is shut. To access your fuel fill, open the driver door, and this will give you access to your fuel fill. This is a diesel powered vehicle, and your local gas station that carries diesel will have the correct diesel for your vehicle. You will also notice with the driver door open, you will have access to the Mercedes-Benz tire label, proper inflation levels, and tire rim size. Pleasure Ways label, which gives you a cargo carrying capacity, as well as the proper tires, rim size, and tire inflation, as well as your motorhome information and motorhome serial number. Next to your fuel fill, you will find your exterior or utility shower. Use the 751 key to unlatch this opening. You will find in this compartment, you have your shower head with the on off. You will have hot and cold running water at this location. This exterior shower can be used for showering outside, also rinsing off various components. Ensure that you lock this compartment and store your shower when not in use. And also ensure that when you're winterizing, you are also winterizing these taps and shower head. Directly below your utility shower down on your running board is your sewer dump area. This small door encloses your sewer, sewer dump cap, your sewer hose, your black water dump and your gray water dump. This is a very simple function. Gravity never fails and gravity is the best way to take your sewer out of your vehicle. Simply remove your cap, remove your sewer hose from the pipe, attach your sewer hose onto the bayonet attachments, pull your black water handle first, allowing your black water to dump through the hose. Close off your black water, then pull your gray water handle, allowing the gray water to flush the black water through your sewer hose. Once this is complete, at most campgrounds or sanitary dump stations, you can remove your sewer hose and flush your sewer hose just with the regular garden hose before restoring into the sewer tube. Next to the utility shower, you will see your utility center. This utility center houses necessary equipment for the operation of your vehicle. In this utility center, you'll find your propane off-on switch. This is an electric solenoid. You do have to have the red key disconnect in an on position to operate your electric solenoid. You will also find your city water connection. This is where you can hook on at a park to a city water pressure. This way you will not have to run your pump. You will also find in this compartment 
a park cable connection. To use your park cable connection, hook in with a suitable cable, turn off the antenna booster on your television, and you can bring park cable into your coach. Finally, in your utility center, you will find your 120 volt power connection. This is a 30 amp connection. To insert your power cord, line the male prongs. The notch prong is near the bottom of the vehicle. Insert it into the opening. Press, turn, and lock with the lock nut onto the receptacle. This way the power cord will not be disconnected if somebody should trip over the cord. Always attach your power cord to your vehicle first and then attach to your exterior power source such as your campground power pole. Midway down the driver's side you will notice there are two vents on the vehicle. These upper and lower vents or for your refrigerator ensure that these vents are not blocked by any debris. You need these vents so that cool air can be drawn in the bottom vent whereas hot air from your fridge is dispelled from the top. Directly below your fridge vents you will find your water heater vent. Ensure that this screened area is not blocked and allow to allow proper airflow for your water heater. To access your water heater and the exterior components of your water heater, unlock the top latch, lift the water heater door off the posts on the bottom. Your water heater is an SW6 by Suburban. It is an auto ignition water heater. When you turn on your electric switch inside, it will automatically ignite your propane you have to ensure that your propane is also in the on position for this water heater to ignite. Your water heater functions on propane but does require 12 volt for ignition and also for temperature reading which will turn on and off your water heater. To ensure your water heater is full of water you can do it with two sources either your city water connection or through your onboard demand pump. One thing you will have to ensure is that either a hot water tap is open inside the vehicle or you use your pressure release valve to relieve the air from inside the water heater as it fills with water. You will notice a steady stream of water either from your pressure release valve if you are using that source or inside your coach through a hot water tap once your water heater is full. If your water heater refuses to operate or if you start your water heater without it being full of water, in some locations it will trip the reset. The reset is located on the black panel just below the pressure release valve simply push in the rubber plug to reset your water heater. One other very important component in your water heater is your anode rod. This is also how you would drain your water heater. It is a 1 and 1 16th inch socket that is needed to remove your anode rod. The anode rod is there to protect the interior of the water heater. Depending on the mineral content of your water will allow itself to be eaten away. Ensure that you replace your anode rod before it is completely eaten away. Next to your water heater is the furnace grill. Ensure that the furnace vents are free and clear from debris. This is the intake and the exhaust for your furnace that is on board on your vehicle. To access the low point drains on your vehicle, you will get under the vehicle just ahead of the driver rear tire and look up to the frame rail to where the brass petcocks are to open up for your low point drains for both your hot and your cold water. To fill your propane or LP tank, your fill valve is located at the back of the vehicle right next to the spare tire carrier. Simply remove the yellow cap, attach your propane and open up your bleeder valve to allow your propane to fill that tank. Your monitor panel features a reading for your LP gas. This LP gas will register full when the LP tank is at 80%. There is a cutoff at 80% where fluid will come out of the breather line when filling your LP gas. It is recommended that you have a propane professional fill your propane tank. In many areas they have propane at pumps and they have a professional that will do that for you. To access your rear doors, you have full access to your passenger side rear door, but to access the driver side rear door, you will have to lower your tire carrier. Your jack tools and tools to lower your spare tire carrier are found underneath your passenger side floor mat. Lift the passenger side floor mat, you will find your tools and your jack in this compartment. Push down and swivel the opening. Lift and remove the plastic panel. You will find your jack and your jack tool bag. 
in your jack tool bag, you will find a 15 16 inch wrench, which is necessary for lowering your, your tire carrier, your jack extension handle, and your tire tool, as well as your tow hook, and multi drivers, which are equipped for the vehicle. To lower and remove your spare tire, you will need your 15 16 inch wrench and your tire tool. To lower your tire carrier, first undo the 15 16 inch bolt at the top of the tire carrier. This is the locking bolt so that it will not allow the tire carrier to bounce while you're in motion. Once you have released your 15 16 inch nut, remove the safety pin by pushing forward and releasing and pull the retaining pin for your tire pin. Push up on the spare tire, slide it out. Ensure when you're lowering your tire carrier, your Continental kit will not be coming in contact with the ground. A protective covering, such as a piece of carpet, piece of cardboard is suggested. With your tire carrier lowered, you have access to your doors, both the driver and passenger door. You can open these doors to 180 degrees and they will lock into position. To release your doors so that you can open them the full 360, slide your door back, pull and lock in your door retainer and then fully open your rear cargo doors. With your door in the full open position, you will notice that it will come up against the magnetic catch. This will prevent the door from swinging in the wind or if somebody would accidentally bang into the door, it is locked into position. With the doors fully open, you have full access to the full and complete rear storage area. To re-engage the door, release the door retainer. Allow it to swing against the black catch. This way, it will lock itself back into position so that you have a stop at 180 degrees. To remove your spare tire from the tire mount, use the 602 key to unlock your Continental tire kit. The 602 key will go into the lock, turn it 90 degrees to release the clip, push it forward and release it from the retaining strap. Once the uh, tire carrier is released, spread the tire carrier and remove it from the tire. Once you have released your chrome ring, Grab the tire cover from the bottom, apply pressure, it will snap off the tire. Go to the wiring connection, lift the tab to release the wire plug and unplug. Now you can fully remove the plastic cover from your spare tire. To lower your tire, use the same procedures as we use to lower the tire for the back door access. To remove the spare tire from the carrier once it is in the flat position, using your jack tool, Release the nuts and unscrew them. You will find three nuts holding this tire onto the tire carrier. Once you have mounted your spare tire on your vehicle, replace the flat tire back onto the carrier, tightening up the retaining nuts using your jack tool. Lift the tire carrier up. This is a heavy operation and may require two people to do this. Push the tire carrier into place, set your locking pin into place. With the locking pin in place, insert the cotter key. Put in your safety and lock that into place. And to avoid vibration of your tire carrier on the back end of your vehicle, tighten your 15 16 inch locking nut. It is recommended that you replace the tire cover and the Continental ring so that your license plate is back on the rear of your vehicle as your license plate is part of the tire cover. When using your tire tool repair kit or your jack, please refer to your Mercedes-Benz manual for proper jacking positions and proper use of the tools. Also, for using your tow hook, please re refer to your Mercedes-Benz manual for the proper placement of your tow hook. Your generator access is from under your coach you will notice between your hitch plates, you have your propane tank. Just ahead of your propane tank, you have your generator. 
to access your generator to check the oil and various other components in there, as well as to get to the generator breaker. You use a flat blade screwdriver, insert it into the slot, turn it 90 degrees, lift the door, slide your door down, and remove your door from the area. Two areas of interest in your generator are your oil dipstick, which is at this point right here. To remove that, just screw it out and check your oil. Remember not to thread the oil dipstick in to check the oil. Secondly, you have an inside start-stop switch for your generator. Just below the start-stop switch is the generator breaker inside and down below. Ensure that this switch is in the upright position. This will be putting power out from your generator. This is the 2.5 kilowatt propane power generator. For further details, please refer to your own manual. The generator exhaust pipe extends on the passenger side at the rear of the coach. Ensure that there is no blockage to this pipe when the generator is in operation. To fill your fresh water tank on the passenger side, you'll find your potable water. You'll need the 751 key to unlock your potable water door. Remove the cap, add your garden hose to fill your water tank. Once the tank is full, you will notice some water coming out of the vent line. At this point, turn your water off because your tank is full. To drain your fresh water tank, or for your fresh water drain, if you notice things dripping underneath your coach, go directly below your water fill, and it is on the back side of the water tank. The Ascent also comes equipped with a power awning. You will find your power awning switch on the end panel of your passenger seat. When you're extending or retracting your awning, ensure that the passenger side sliding door is in the shut position. To extend this awning, Push the out button, which is the down arrow, to extend your awning. To lower your awning legs, release the awning leg, slide it in. Once the awning leg has been lowered, lock the orange tab back into position and drop the lower foot until it locks into the locking position. Now you can extend your awning leg. Once again, release your orange tab and slide the entire awning leg into the down position. This will allow you to peg the awning foot into the ground. It will also allow you to adjust the pitch of your awning in rainy conditions. To lock your awning leg to the side of the coach, lift the retaining roller Set the awning leg into the lower bar, press the awning leg against your coach, and lower the retaining roller. This will lock your awning into position. Then using the orange clip, you can once again adjust your pitch. At the rear of your vehicle, below your power sofa, you will notice your 110 and 12 volt breaker panel. To access your breakers and fuses, simply snap open the door, you will notice you've got your 110 breakers and your fuses for all of your 12 volt components. These are listed on the cover of the breaker panel. In your driver's side ottoman, another major component area for your 12 volt system is your red key disconnect. This disconnect, when in the off position, you can remove the key. In the on position, it will lock into the on position. This turns on the power to your 12 volt battery. It must be in the on position to charge the battery from the converter when you're plugged in. You will also notice you have four manual reset breakers in this area. The small reset button is on the copper post end of the breaker. It is a small black tab. You have one for your converter, one for your generator, one for your power sofa, and one for your fridge. If one of these items is not functioning, the first place to check is the manual reset breakers and the buttons on these breakers. Your vehicle is equipped with an LP CO2 detector. This will sound if there are any of the gases present. This is mounted near the floor next to your 12 volt access door in the driver's side ottoman. Please test regularly and refer to your owner's manual and operation manual for your LP CO2 detector. 
To lay down your bed, you first are going to lay out your power sofa using the switch above the TV on the driver's side rear partition. Push the down button to fold your sofa down, which is the down arrow. Once the sofa is reclined, you can sleep on the sofa in two different ways. You can sleep side to side or you can fill in the ottoman cushions. We've retrieved the bed boards from behind the driver's seat against the bathroom partition. To insert the bed boards, lift one of the sofa cushions, put in your bed board, slide it and set it down onto the maple rails. Do the same with the second board, slide it under the one cushion, set it down on the maple rails. Bring in your backrest to fill in the center. And your bed is now in the made up full position. With your seat partially reclined, this is the best time to insert the female ends of your seat belts. Your vehicle is equipped with a locking table pole. This locking table pole features three teeth that are mounted into the table base. To set it into the table base, line up the teeth and drop it to the floor. Give it a quarter turn. Once you have given it a quarter turn, rotate the locking mechanism counterclockwise and secure the table base to the floor. Add the round dinette table to the top set it into place, push it down, and lock it into position. In a small storage unit like this, many people will store this table and the table leg behind the driver's seat. Your television is locked into the stow position. To release your television, pull down on the cord just below the TV, unlock, and swing your TV into the perfect viewing position for wherever you are in your vehicle. Before you leave your parking position, ensure that your TV is locked into position in the stow position so that it will not inadvertently swing while you're driving down the road. Your television and Blu-ray player operate off 110 volts. You have a 110 volt inverter situated up in your upper cabinet. If you're operating off a 12 volt power, you will have to have your TV and DVD player plugged into the inverter. There is an off on switch on the fan side of the inverter opposite the plugs. Turn this on to operate your inverter and now you have 110 power to both your DVD player and your television. If you're plugged in in a campsite, turn your inverter off, unplug your TV and DVD player and you can now plug them into the permanent plug that is mounted on the wall of the cabinet above. To operate your television on antenna, you've got the antenna wall plate mounted just beside your inverter. And if you turn on your antenna booster by pushing in the black button, you will see a green light light up telling you that your booster is on. To use your park cable, simply turn off your booster and this will bring park cable into your coach. You will notice on your booster plug, you also have a 12 volt socket. This is fused at 3 amps. It can be fused up to a maximum of 7 amps in your fuse panel down below your sofa as well. This is an additional cable hookup for antenna if you do have an additional television that you want to run in your vehicle. Your Blu-ray player is a Wi-Fi device. It's equipped to bring in Wi-Fi. It also has a USB port. To use your Blu-ray player on your television, use your HDMI input. Your vehicle is equipped with a suburban furnace. To turn on your furnace, simply snap your off on switch out of the lock position and slide it to the desired temperature. When the furnace is not in use, slide it back, lock it into position, and this will turn off your furnace. Your furnace fan may run for a short time when it is in the off position as it clears and cycles. At the end of your kitchen end panel, you will find two light switches. The first light switch, which is closest to the outside wall of the vehicle, controls the under shelf lights. The second switch controls the ceiling lights in the rear of your vehicle. You also have additional lighting under the rear upper shelf for reading. 
You have a reading light switch conveniently located just above the head end of your bed. Simply turn them off and on using the small toggle switch under the shelf. On the driver's side, just above the microwave oven, you will find your monitor panel. On your monitor panel, you have your water pump switch. This will operate your water pump, your onboard water system. You have a lighted switch. If it is in the on position, the switch will light up. For reading your battery, press your battery button. You will notice it reads C, G, F, and L. C is for charge, G is for good, F is for fair, L is for low. It will only stay on the C mark while the vehicle is plugged in or when the vehicle is running or when the generator is running. After a few minutes of shutting down these items, you will drop one mark to the G mark. To check any one of your tanks from the LPG to the gray to the black to the fresh, simply push in the button. The lights will tell you if you are one third, two thirds, or full, or if you are totally empty. Next to your monitor panel above your microwave, you have your generator start stop switch. This is an LP gas generator. You will have to ensure that your LP gas is in the on position and that you do have. LP gas or propane in your propane tank. To start your generator, push the start button, which is the top of the switch. This will engage the starter to start the Onan generator. To stop your generator after it has been run, push the stop, which is the bottom of the switch. This is just a simple rocker switch that rocks back and forth. You will also notice you have an hour gauge for your generator. It is recommended that you run your generator at least half an hour each month. Next to your generator switch, you also have a water heater switch. This water heater switch is powered by 12 volt. The 12 volt will register the heat of your water heater and also will run the auto ignite for your water heater. Turn on the switch, allow the water heater to snap on you will notice the reset button will be on until the water heater ignites. Before you turn on your water heater, ensure your water heater is full of water. Also ensure that your propane switch is in the on position. Microwave oven is uh, your basic uh, microwave oven. It gives you all of your heat settings. This is not a convection oven in this vehicle. This is just a strictly a microwave oven. This a microwave oven does operate off the 110 power source. You can only operate your microwave if you are on generator or if you are on shore power. Your vehicle is equipped with a 3.7 cubic foot fridge. This is the Dematic 8505 fridge. Let's open it up. Inside your fridge you have your freezer compartment with a spring down door. This is a removable freezer compartment. You can remove the freezer by undoing the clips underneath and taking it out, creating a full fridge space. This fridge also comes with a lock that slides out for when the vehicle is in storage so that this fridge is left slightly ajar. Push the handle in and slide it out. The 8505 fridge from Domatic is a three-way fridge. It has your AC or your 120 volt power source. It has your propane and it also has your DC or 12 volt power source. The DC or 12 volt power source is meant to be used when you're driving down the road. It also has an automatic function. Setting it to automatic function will allow the fridge to choose the best possible power source for cooling. You also can adjust your temperature. This fridge also features a warning beeper which will beep to signify if you do not have an adequate power source. Your vehicle is equipped with the SW60 water heater. Inside your coach, you open up the cabinet door that is just below the refrigerator and that will give you access to the bypass valves. This fridge is currently set in a winterized position, meaning that the bottom valve is closed, making a T with the line. The top valve is closed, making a T with the line. And the bypass valve is open, allowing cold water to go bo through both the hot and cold water systems. To move this into summer mode, you will close off your bypass and open up your top and bottom valves. Next to the water heater door below your fridge, you have your cold air return for your furnace, as well as your ducts. One is featured just below your fridge. The other one is featured on your driver's side ottoman bench. Below the drawers in your kitchen cabinet, in the large cabinet door, 
you will find your water pump. This is a SureFlow water pump that will pressurize your water system inside your coach to 30 psi. You will notice the inlet side of your water pump is the clear plastic line running to the inlet side. You will also notice that it goes through a filter system before entering the water pump. Ensure that this filter is clear at all times and ensure that you have adequate flow before turning on your water pump. Ensure that you have water in your fresh water tank. To remove the filter on your water pump, to check it and to clean it, simply unscrew the filter from the housing. And you can remove your filter and clean your filter. Ensure that this filter is tight when you place it back on so that there is no leak on the inlet side of your water pump. Just above your water pump you will notice the green corrugated line. This is the fresh water fill for your holding tank. This is from your potable water outside and down into your water tank. You will also notice a second clear line. This second clear line is the vent line for your water holding tank. In your kitchen countertop area, you will also notice that you have a GFI, a ground fault breaker. This ground fault breaker controls the fridge and the kitchen and the exterior plug. You should test this ground fault breaker regularly by pushing the test button and the reset button. If your GFI is tripped, you will notice there will be a light on on your GFI. Simply push the center reset button. To reset your GFI and you will notice the light will go out. Please follow the operating instructions for the GFI in your operation manual. Your vehicle is equipped with a two burner SMEV glass cooktop stove. Ensure the burners are cool to close the lid. Lift the lid of your cooktop to access your burners. To ignite your burners ensure that your propane switch is in the on position. Simply select the light position. Hold the burner in the light position and strike your striker. You may have to strike your striker more than once to ignite your burner. Once your burner is lit, turn your burner knob to the desired temperature or height of flame. Your galley is also equipped with a stainless steel sink, Corian countertop, Corian cutting board, single handle faucet. Lift the faucet and choose the desired temperature. The sink strainer is a screw in and screw out sink strainer. For additional counter space, your vehicle is equipped with a flip up countertop extension. Pull your countertop extension up until it locks into position. You will notice there is also an additional kitchen plug in this area. This kitchen plug is as well controlled by the front GFI. To release your countertop extension, Go to the ends of the legs, push the ends, and that will release and allow you to drop your countertop extension. For safety, your vehicle is equipped as well with a fire extinguisher. You will notice this fire extinguisher can be accessed from inside the vehicle or at your kitchen area, or if you open up your side door, you can access the fire extinguisher from the side door. This provides additional safety for your vehicle. You will notice on the kitchen upper end panel, you have two switches. These two switches control the main ceiling lights and the exterior porch light. The cabinet door is held open by the Hafele stay. This Hafele stay is adjustable. Simply turn the center Allen screw to adjust the tension. You will notice all cabinet doors are equipped with Bloom cabinet hinges. Your Ascent is equipped with 11,000 BTU rooftop domatic air conditioner. On your controls, you can choose whether to run your air conditioner at full air conditioning, or you can also switch to fan mode. You can also select your desired temperature. Your air conditioner is also equipped with filters. Just simply pull them out and keep them clean for optimum use of your air conditioner. Your rooftop air conditioner will operate off of your shore power or off of your rear generator. However, when using your generator, please be aware that there is a limited amount of power and you will only be able to use your air conditioner if you are not using your microwave. If you want to use your microwave, then turn off your air conditioner and then use your microwave. Your vehicle is equipped with the fantastic exhaust fan. This is strictly an exhaust fan, which will exhaust this coach in just a few minutes. 
It is recommended that you run your exhaust fan when you are showering or cooking so that it will draw any air and moisture out of your vehicle. To turn it on, simply turn the button to the desired speed. The Fantastic Fan also has a temperature selector. This is the desired temperature inside your vehicle, which will engage your Fantastic Fan. Additional safety features that are in your vehicle is the smoke detector located at the highest point on the roof. This is powered by a nine volt battery, which should be checked regularly. On this model, you simply just pull the smoke detector down, which gives you the access to the nine volt battery. In some cases, your smoke detector will twist and come off the ceiling. Your vehicle is equipped with a wine guard crank up TV antenna, and this is a directional antenna. To simply crank your antenna up, fold down the handle, and crank the antenna up till it is in the full upright position. Then you can turn your antenna to bring in your best reception. Remember when you're on your antenna, you do want to have your booster switch in the on position. Your ascent bathroom is a convenient small bathroom. It has a permanently affixed mirror. It has your sink with hot and cold running water as well as this is a wet bath with your shower hose. Simply pull up your diverter once you have desired temperature and you will get the desired temperature out of your shower head. To use your shower in your ascent, follow the following steps. First, remove the carpeting from the floor of the shower to expose the drain. Secondly, lower the side window curtain Third, install the vinyl covering, which you will find in your owner's manual package, over top of the curtain area. Unsnap your shower curtain and pull it sideways. You will notice there are Velcro on your shower curtain to attach it to the front bathroom wall and you're ready to shower. To rotate your passenger seat, slide the seat into a central position, release the handle that is at the back, and rotate your seat to the desired position. You will notice the seat will lock into position when it is a full 180 degrees around. Once you have hit your desired position, you can also slide your seat into the more comfortable seating position. To rotate your driver's seat, move the backrest into a more upright position. Using the lever at the back of the seat, release the seat and swivel with the backrest towards the outside of the vehicle. You will notice this seat will only be limited by the bathroom wall. The dash area of your 2014 Ascent is equipped with many Mercedes-Benz features. One of the features that is in the center of the dash is the radio system. This is a Bluetooth system as well as a backup camera and navigation system. The navigation system is provided by Mercedes-Benz. Please refer to your Mercedes-Benz manual for operation. Your rear view camera operates when you shift your vehicle into reverse, giving you distance and the back end of your vehicle. Your 2014 Mercedes-Benz chassis features additional safety equipment. For example, blind spot assist, lane assist, and collision prevention. Please refer to your Mercedes-Benz manual for additional information as there is a lot of activation and deactivation which you may want to refer to in your manual. You will notice your 2014 Sprinter chassis as well has steering wheel controls, for your telephone and also volume up and down. It also controls the display panel in the center of the dash so that you can read what your vehicle is doing at all times. Your Mercedes-Benz radio is also equipped with a USB and also an additional adapter located in the glove box just in front of the driver's steering wheel. 
please refer to your Mercedes-Benz manual for information on these two plugs. The 2014 Mercedes-Benz has ample storage in all door panels. For example, they've got storage compartment. This one is featuring a first aid kit in the passenger side door, as well as ample storage in the door panel itself with the drink holder, your speaker in the door. On the driver's side, the Mercedes-Benz also has a large storage compartment, drink holder, and as well, storage in the side door panel itself. This one is featuring emergency flashing flashlight. Your Mercedes-Benz vehicle has two basic fuse panels. Check your Mercedes-Benz manual to see what fuses are for what appliances. If you zip up your driver's side seat skirt, you will find your fuse door just underneath your driver's side seat skirt. This is fuses for the Mercedes-Benz operating system. Mercedes-Benz has a second fuse panel located just next to your driver's side brake pedal. And this is the additional Mercedes-Benz fuse panel. And also this is where you would read for a scan tool. Mercedes-Benz also features a convenient battery disconnect. This is a battery disconnect for your engine starting battery. When you are placing your vehicle in storage, simply disconnect your battery by pulling off the quick disconnect beside your gas pedal. This concludes your orientation of your 2014 Ascent. For further information, please refer to your Pleasure Ray manual or your Mercedes-Benz Sprinter manual.